These are the tools that we'll use in the demonstration of our IPB boots. This is the CCT02 cutting tool. We have the CST-600 prep tool. We have the CST-400 prep tool. And we have our CTU universal crimp handle. This crimp handle right now happens to have a 610 hex die in there. That's our 319203 die. And here we have our 429 hex dies, our 3192, 3190-202 crimp dies. These are for crimping the LMR400. What we're going to do is we're going to combine a piece of LMR400 and LMR600 together using our EZ style X-Series connectors and CST tools. We're going to put WSB strain relief boots behind them and we're going to use IPB boots to seal up the entire mated interface as if you were connecting an antenna feeder to a jumper cable or making a splice out in the field between two pieces of cable and you wanted it weather sealed. Using the tools that we have and the connectors that we have, the products that we have, this is a very simple, very consistent uh, way to go about this. First thing we'll do is we'll take a piece of our LMR 400. We'll take our IPB boot. This is a IPB 400 NF. We'll put an N female connector on there, our EZ 400 NF-X connector, and we'll use our WSB-400 uh, boot. We'll cut the cable nice and cleanly, a couple, two, three inches back from the end of the cable using our CCT02 cutting tool, like so. We'll take our silicone lubricant, we'll place just one drop of the silicone lubricant onto the cable. We'll take our molded silicone boot, our overmold IPB boot, we'll place this over the cable like so. Slide that back on the cable. And since this stuff dries so fast, with no residue at all, it's environmentally friendly, we'll put a little more little drop on there, that lubricant, and we'll take our WSB 400 boot, and we'll place that also over the cable, like so, and slide that back a little bit, just like that. Now we'll take our crimp ferrule, place our crimp ferrule over the cable, <clears throat> take our CST-400 tool, make sure there's nothing stuck inside one there, place it over the cable like so, Start pressing and turning, pressing on that thumb switch. Once that thing bottoms out, makes an extra revolution or two. At that point, leave it depressed and just pop it off the, uh, the cable. Take that whole pellet off, got a nice exposure on the center connector. You flip it around to side two and you'll notice there's a deburr tool built into the end of the tool. You place that over the center conductor of the cable and just a half a dozen times maybe, just back and forth. And you, what you'll do is you'll put a nice chamfer on the end of that cable, end of that center conductor. Now you remain on side two, place the tool over the cable, and just like an old-fashioned pencil sharpener, you spin the tool until it spins freely, just like so. so at that point you get a nice prep on there. You take your easy style X-series connector, spring finger, there's no soldering, a lot of advantages to this connector, tri-metal plate, good corrosion resistance, you got these ribs in the back to help with the strain relief. In this case, it'll lock onto the WSB boot that we're using. Great VZSWR performance. You know, it, the, one of the nice things is all the connectors that are X-series, they all have the same strip dimensions that work with that CST tool. So at this point, we just take the braid wires and just fold them back a little bit from the core. No need to comb them out or anything. This is designed to be a nice snug fit, this connector. You'll just get it started, it's already a snug fit onto the cable. You push it and you feel a little resistance here. It comes in contact with a center conductor. Give it one extra push and turn it. That's those four fingers, brilliant copper fingers riding up on the center conductor. Take the ferrule, bring it up forward. Notice those braids are right where you want them to be. They're right, right where you'd like to see them. So at this point, we'll demonstrate how this universal tool can be used for, for both sets of cables. Right now we have the 610 hex die in there. We'll put the uh, 402 die in there. We'll just take one of these uh, dies, place it underneath the lower uh, uh, die there, squeeze the tool and release it. And that will pop out the, uh, the lower die. That upper die, just take the blade of uh, the, uh, this, this tool here, this CCTO tool and pop that out. You got both of those larger dies out now. These, these dies have a uh, groove in one side. You gotta line that up so you, you know they're orientated, the top and the bottom. You can't mess it up. Pop that bottom die in, and now you're all set to go right there with the, the uh, 429 hex. So we're gonna wanna crimp that 
just right at the very back of the connector. And we're gonna to wanna to crimp it just once, right at the very back, like so. So you notice there's a little bump in the ferrule there. You wanna let that remain, that's by design. You don't wanna crush that jacket, change the impedance of the cable, alter the performance. So we're gonna leave that just the way it is. We're gonna bring that WSB up, boot up forward. We're gonna apply a little bit of uh, lubricant. And you may even hear as that boot comes up, you may hear that snap onto the back of the, uh, the connector like so. So you get a nice you know, strain relief, a nice seal there. And you also notice you have this IPB boot back here. So now, the other part of the equation here, we'll take the LMR600. What we have is another IPB boot. We have the opposite gender. We have a male boot designed for LMR600. It's the IPB-600-NM. We're gonna use an N-male connector. EZ style, which happens to be the EZ-600-NMH-X, and we have our WSB-600 boot, of course. So same basic process. We take our CCTO2 cutting tool, get it two or three inches back from the end of the cable, cut that cable, and leave it nice and round. We'll take a little bit of our silicone lubricant. Maybe go a little faster on this end here. We'll take our IPB boot, slide it back, a little more lubricant, take our WSB 600 boot, get that started, slide that right back, slide our crimp ferrule there. Our CST 600 operates just the way our CST 400 did. We take side one, make sure there's nothing stuck in there from last time, place it over the cable till you get a positive stop, push down that thumb switch, and once that thing bottoms out all the way, make an extra revolution or two, keep it depressed, and you pop that piece right off of there, that pellet right off of there to expose that center conductor. Now you flip the tool around to side two. You'll notice there's a deburr tool built into the, the tool itself. Place that over the uh, center conductor cable and maybe a half a dozen back and forth. You know, just to, what that'll do is it'll provide a nice chamfer on the end of that center conductor. That's a real important step because we're using these spring finger contacts. Now we're still at site two of the tool here, just like an old fashioned pencil sharpener. Spin the tool around the cable until it spins freely, just like so. And you got a nice good prep there. At that point, just take those braid wires, fold them back a little bit. You get your connector, it's a nice snug fit. Again, it's an X-series connector, all the same benefits and characteristics of, of the, uh, the female we use there. Corrosion resistance, uh, excellent VSWR, ribs in the back. All the 600 connectors work with the CST tool, the X-series versions. We get this started. It's a nice snug fit. Push it, you feel it come in contact with the center conductor. Give it one extra push. That's those four beryllium copper fingers riding up on the center conductor of the cable. You take this ferrule at this point, bring it forward, and look, those braids are right where you want them to be. No need to trim them with a pair of scissors or anything. Now we get to change this once again, this tool here. Take a die, place it under the lower die. Pop that die out. We can use the blade of the, uh, the uh, CCTO2 to pop that die out. We'll take our two larger dies. Again, they're orientated, so you can't mess them up. One goes in the bottom, one goes in the top, like so. We're gonna crimp just once at the very back of the connector. We're gonna get as close to the connector as we possibly can. Squeeze down, and we're all set at that point. So as we said, that this, this dries very quickly. It's lubricant, put another drop of lubricant there. We'll slide that WSB boot up. You may hear something you know, lock on pl in place there. So that now create an IP67 seal at the back and a nice strain relief. And this may be a little overkill if you're using IPB boots, but we just wanted to take the opportunity to demonstrate both these WSB boots and IPB boots as a whole package with these easy connectors. So pretend this was your feeder cable and this was your jumper cable, or this was just a cable out in the field that you wanted to splice together. You got a male, you got a female, really good performance connectors. You've done a real good job terminating them. You've got good impedance uniformity. You mate these together, the male and the female. 
This is an end. You'd probably want to you want to torque it to about 23, 26 inch pounds properly to engage that gasket. We're not going to do that in the case of this demonstration, but just something you'd want to keep in mind. You've got nice strain relief, nice WSB boots. You want to put a little bit of lubricant there. Put a little lubricant there. You can take this IPB boot, bring this forward. So you can take the male IPB boot on the LMR 600, bring that forward. And because this is soft silicone rubber, even though this is threaded, you can actually push this together just like that. You just might want to twist at that last you know, half a revolution and you're all set. Now this is something that you're not even going to see this on a TDR. This is, you used high quality connectors, you used these CST tools, you did everything to minimize, limit variables in the process. This is a foolproof weather seal boot that's on here. For any reason, if you ever want to take this boot off and get at those connectors, you just unscrew these boots, slide them back, you get at that connector. So this is a nice solution and it didn't take us very long. You can do it very quickly and very consistently out in the field with almost no tools, no electricity, no, no, not, not much more than some very simple hand tools. Thank you very much.